In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at positive binary and hexadecimal integers and how a computer would represent data. It's important to recognise there are actually only two states that a computer can be in. Everything is an on or an off, which is represented by a zero or one. When a computer is built using electricity, this is the case. It uses a um, vast complicated set of switches, which can either be in two states, the zero or a one. In Denary, we have 10 options. The 10 options are zero to nine. Whereas as we've figured out already, binary only has two, a zero or one. We call this base two. Decimal, what's sometimes known as denary, is base ten. Now here's a quick reminder of how our denary system works. It's fairly straightforward. We count 10 because in base 10 we use 10 fingers to count. Once we've reached 10, we figure this out by placing a 1 in the second column to say we've had one set of 10. And then we carry on counting up. We place another one in the next Binary works exactly the same. However, we only have two options, a zero and a one. So in essence, every time we count to two, when we're including that value, we add a one into the box. In your exam, you're expected to be able to convert a denary number to binary and back again. Let's have a quick look at the binary sequence. The numbers in the categories double each time. Let's explore why this happens. Remember in binary we only have two options. Binary comes from binary digits, a bit. Each bit can be a zero or a one. As you've seen, when we have two bits or two binary digits, we can actually have four different combinations. Now, don't get confused that the third value in our sequence is four, because remember, we start at zero. We can make the combinations zero, one, two and three. When we increase this to three binary digits, we can actually make eight options, zero to seven. There are eight different options and different choices where we can use the binary digits. And therefore we can calculate the options as the following, two to the power of n. Let's look at this a bit closer. When we have two to the power of n, for example, if we have three binary digits, we know that there are eight options. 
Our base is 2. That's because we have two options, a 0 or a 1. The 3, because there are 3 binary digits. So that means with 3 binary digits, we can make 8 different options. However, the biggest number we can make is 7, because we start with 0. So if you want to calculate the biggest number of values you can make with those binary digits, you do 2 to the power of n minus 1. Here's your key question. What's the biggest number you can make in 8-bit binary? Hopefully, you figured the answer is 255. That's because we'd have 2 to the power of 8, which is 256. So there's actually 256 options. However, we start at 0. So the biggest number we can make is 255. So if we have a byte with all 1s, it's actually 255. Now remember, we have a series of switches to represent ons and offs. 1 is on and 0 is off. So this number here would be 181. 128 plus 32 plus 16 plus 4 plus 1. And it's important in the exam that you show you're working out. And now I want you to try this task. Convert 234 into binary. The next one I want you to practice is converting 175 into binary. Use the following link to practice binary. We're now going to look at a binary addition, how to add up binary. Now, usually 1 plus 1 would equal 2, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 would equal 3. But we need to think why 1 plus 1 actually equals 10, and 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 11. We know 1 plus 1 is actually 2, but 2 in binary is 1, 0. So when we're adding two values together, we represent that also in binary. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. 3 in binary is actually 1, 1. Let's think how we would add up values in maths. If I wanted to add 51 to 143, I'd create a sum like this. I'd add my 3 and 1 together, my 4 and my 5 together, and add the 1 on the end to make 194. In binary, we use the same system. If I wanted to add 143 to 51, I write them out in binary first, and then I can add the values. Let's just think about how we carry in maths. We're going to have a look this time at 153 plus 51. The first one is 3 plus 1, which is 4, which is easy. The next one is 5 plus 5, that gives us 10. So we put a 0 in our answer and we carry 1. Then finally we have 1 add 1, which equals 2. But in binary, this is slightly different. We know that when we're doing 143 plus 51, we can write it out in binary as shown as the on the screen. But 1 and 1 equals 2. And we can't write a 2 in the box because 2 is illegal in binary. We can only use 1 and 0, on and off. So to do 2, we have to write in binary 1, 0. We use the same rules of carry as we do in maths. The 1 goes underneath the next column, and the 0 ends up in the column that we've used. Again, let's look a look at the second column now. We've got 1 and 1, but we've also got a carry 1. So we've got 3. We know we can't represent that as 3 in the answer, 
But we know 3 in binary is 1,1. One, one. Notice how we ignore the rest of the zeros there. So we can place 1 in the answer and carry 1. So let's finish the addition. 0, 1 and 1 would give us 2. So that's 1 carry 0. Again, we've got 0 plus 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we do 1 carry 0. Carrying on with the same method, again, we've got two 1s, which gives us 2. So 1, 0. Again, we have 1, 0, 1, which is 2. So we have 0, but we carry the 1. This time we have 0, 0 and 1. That's only 1, so we can just put a 1 in our answer. And finally, 0 and 1 gives us 1. Now, it's always worth checking the exam that this is correct. So to check your answer, I recommend adding up the values which have a 1 in the final answer. 128 plus 64 plus 2 is 194. This is correct. And I want you to try this question on your own. Question number 2 is shown just here. Try adding up these binary values. And now I want you to try this question. You might find this a bit hard at the end, and we'll go through the answer shortly. Now, when we add up these values, we end up with a 1, 0 at the end. This is what we're going to do with it, because we can't have a 9-bit answer. The largest number we can hold is 255. So if we add up two numbers which are going to give a greater value than 255, this is going to cause what's called an overflow error. We can't work like this. Now in modern computers, CPUs hold much larger numbers, so this is dealt with more regularly. You might have heard of a 32 or 64 bit processor. This means that we've got 64 bits or 32 bits for one answer. That means we can handle that kind of situation. However, it does happen that overflows occur. When doing binary addition, it could make Please complete the following binary addition and we'll go through the answer shortly. Try this binary addition and see how you get on with it. There is practice for binary addition in this spreadsheet. What are these codes and how have you seen them before? So hexadecimal codes are used all around us. They're used in MAC addresses, they're used in colour addresses and you'll see them regularly with computers. So, as we know, computers can only deal with a 0 and 1. This causes problems for computer scientists. It very quickly can escalate the size of the number of binary digits that we need. For example, 258 would need 9 digits. To solve this, computer scientists came up with another number system to help them deal with base 2 numbers. This is using hexadecimal. We know that our denary number system counts up in ones, tens, or hundreds, and the binary counts up in the binary sequence, 2 to the power of n, so 1, 2, 4, 
816. The hexadecimal number actually has the following placements, 1, 16, 256. So if you look at the number of options that we could actually have, it very, very quickly improves quite quickly. So with hexadecimal, we count from 0 to F, whereas in denary it's 0 to 9 and binary it's 0 and 1. So this can get a bit confusing while counting. Have a look at these number lines and have a look at how they actually work. See if you can figure out what comes after these values. The answers are on the screen. A massive advantage of hexadecimal is that we actually have significantly more values than we even do in our denary based system. It's also much easier for us to learn hexadecimal than it is binary. We can represent everything, usually in two characters, that we can in 8-bit binary digits. So FF would be 256, whereas 256 in binary would be 11111111111. For the exam, you need to be able to convert hexadecimal into denary and vice versa. So here's our recipe for converting them. Number one, convert the denary to binary. Split the byte to form two nibbles and then convert into hexadecimal. If you're watching my video, it's probably worth getting the actual PowerPoint to see the animations in this slide. Number one, we'd convert 72 from denary into binary. We then split it into two nibbles. And we're only using one, two, four, eight because it's two nibbles. And then we convert it into hexadecimal. I advise in the exam writing out your basic sequence down the right hand side like I've done here. You'll notice that I've put a 16, a small 16 at the bottom. This is to show it is base 16. 72 in denary is 48 in hexadecimal. This could get confusing, so it's important for us to write those bases. It's base 16 because there are 16 options. When we're using denary, it's base 10 because there are 10 options. Here's another example, 115 to hexadecimal. We convert it to denary, to binary, split into two nibbles, and then we convert it to hexadecimal, remembering your base. Here's a slightly harder example, 115 from hexadecimal. We convert it to binary first, split into two nibbles, and then we convert it to hexadecimal. Now, sometimes we'd need to work backwards. Now, first of all, what we do is we write out the hexadecimal. Do exactly the same, but backwards. So we split it into two nibbles, F and D. Join the nibbles together and then convert it to denary. ASCII is American standard code for information interchange. It actually uses 7 bits to store 128 different bit combinations, enough to cover the standard English language keyboard. The first 32 code representations can be shown, including backspace and enter. Here is an example of the ASCII table. You can see it's got a denary, a binary and a hexadecimal representation as well. As we previously said, numbers actually are stored in binary. We know that computers can only work in binary. 
So it's important that we represent everything in binary as well. It's the only thing the processor is going to be working with. Unicode is an example of a character set. However, there's a problem. 128-bit combinations is limited. We can't use this for other languages such as Chinese. Therefore, Unicode was developed actually in the 1980s and became standard. This allowed for 65,536 different combinations. It's then been followed by UTF-32, so a 32-bit combination which allows over a million characters. So we can store all characters for all languages, allowing computers to communicate from all around the world. The first 128 codes introduced were the same as ASCII to main compatibility between systems. If two different systems are being used with data representations, they'll be interpreted in the wrong way when transferring data. Therefore, this one Unicode global communication system allowed consistency. Moving from 8 bits to 16 bits does increase the file size and, however, it's going to slow slightly transmission speeds. Here is our summary. Make sure you understand all three of these keywords. We haven't really looked at a character set and you need to understand this definition. So make sure you add this to your notes. You can actually check what character encoding your web browser is using using one of the following methods.